All right, here we go. Dr. Alex Vidan. Is it Vidan? Vidan. So Vidan. Like Sedan, but with a V. Oh, okay, man, I messed it up. That's okay. Uh, no, it's all good. All good. <laughs> How are you doing today? Excellent. You? Yeah, I'm great. I'm great. It's great sitting down with you. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to start, we kind of we kind of already did a little bit when we were talking. I didn't want to uh, go too deep into it because um, I know I wanted to ask you on, you know, when, we're, when we are recording. Yeah. Um, you're coming, you're going to China pretty soon, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so what's taking you back there? You said you went last year? I did. I went 18 months ago and, uh, and went all over and spoke about uh, chiropractic, health, wellness, all of that. And then they're asking me to come back and just share some more. So. Um, I went through the ICA, the International Chiropractors Association. Okay. And so traveled over there. When we were there 18 months ago, I did that. Uh, there was a group of us, and we kind of did a blitz, and we all went to different areas. Okay. And my route was uh, in 14 days. I did 15 different cities and spoke. Whoa. Yeah, so it was amazing. So one of those days you had two cities? Yes. Oh, man. Yeah. So what was the focus of like your discussion over there? The whole thing was chiropractic. It was okay. talking about chiropractic, health, wellness, chiropractic. It was really talking about what it is that we do as far as what true chiropractic is. You know, here a lot of times we think neck pain, back pain, headaches, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. right? Um, really, the, the true thing about it is it's about affecting the nervous system. A lot of the research now is showing how it affects the brain. And so that's what we were there talking about. Like, how does that actually work? Oh, really? And in a country of 1.4 billion people, um, China only has about 100 chiropractors that are there which the vast majority of them are really into the traditional Chinese medicine route. Mm -hmm. And so the people there have no idea about chiropractic. Oh, so wow. So when I would go there, I would, I would talk, imagine it like every time I would go to a new city, I would do either one to three talks a day. And those talks were filled. You know, they would have, you know, 100 to 300 people there in the room that you'd be talking to. Sometimes I got interviewed by the newspapers, by uh, the media, by the TV, by whatever it is, right? Yeah. And so... It was amazing. Man, how exhausting was that? <laughs> it, it was. It was a lot, you know, because every day you're starting off the day and it's a full blitz. It's a full go, right? Yeah. But um, it's like anything, right? Like you and I were talking about before. It's like if you're passionate about whatever it is, it doesn't matter. You can make it happen. Oh, yeah. Right? I, absolutely. And so. Yeah. And, and and whenever you're doing something that you're, you know, like you so you're passionate about, yeah. you enjoy, um, like the days are long, but it, you're, you're still able to, you know, dial in and get yeah. it done. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's really cool. And I, I felt like if I'm going to be over there away from my wife and kids and, and pouring in that time, like I was like, I'm going to make this count. Absolutely. You know, like this is going to mean something. And, and it did. So, yeah. so that's what it comes down to. So why do you think that um, the chiropractic profession is so underrepresented over there? Yeah. I think it's because of those things where uh, they already have traditional Chinese medicine, mm -hmm. which is great. It has a ton of benefits. It's just different. It's different from what we have. And so there's no schools over there. There's no um, there's no education system for that. And so because of that, I feel like there's a, there's a huge vacuum that's there, a, a, a huge opportunity for people to be helped in a way that they've never been helped before. Yeah. Um, I mean, I had people bring in MRIs to me and x-rays and all kinds of stuff. I sat with heads of hospitals and we talked about things and, and everyone was looking at the same perspective of, we need this. Yeah. Like, we need chiropractic here. We need that kind of a thing here. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you know, now some of the schools are starting to work with China to try to get that going over there. Some of the schools have started to plant flags over there. Um, it, it's going to be a good thing because yeah. it's going to introduce a whole new paradigm to, you know, what, a seventh of the world's population. Right, right yeah. And whenever I think of China, um, I think of, I mean, just there's so many advancements going on mm -hmm. over there in, in the world of science. You would For think sure. that... You know, that would be right there. You would be right there. I agree. What they'd be doing. So I, I was shocked. Whenever I went over there, I was like, <laughs> what do you mean you don't know about chiropractic? They're like, no, we don't have those here. Yeah. And so one chiropractor reached out to me on social media that was there in China, and he's tapped into the, the chiropractic market there. And then I had another one and another one and another one reaching out to me, and they were just like, yeah, we don't have anything like this here wow. now. You know, they all went to school over here in the U.S., but then they went back over there to practice for one reason or another. Uh -huh. So Wow, that's fascinating. Yeah. Um, man, you said something that, uh, I, I want to ask about because you said, so how does, um, I'm, I'm fascinated by the brain. Yeah. Um, my daughter, she was diagnosed with, uh, like autism on like, so she's on the spectrum. She's not very severe, but that, 
that diagnosis, mm-hmm. it got me extremely fascinated into sure. the brain. And then um, I, f- I fought for about a decade and I played high school football. So mm-hmm. CTE, TBI, sure. you know, these are all very real things. Absolutely. So I've, di- I've, I've dove very deep into like research and like, cool. you know, different nootropics and how can it help the brain yeah. and different things like that. But I wasn't familiar with, with chiropractic being yeah. one of those, one of those things. Can you talk about that some? Absolutely. Um, that's one of those things where it, it's amazing to see now. If, if you think about it from the perspective of, all right, our, our, the way our neurology works and the way everything functions and comes together, right? So let's just tap into that just for a moment. And let's think about the fact that within our brain and within, within the, the vault that's there within our brain, there's something that's called cerebral spinal fluid, mm-hmm. right? And so it bathes the brain. It keeps it functioning like it's supposed to, okay. as well as it cycles down into the, into the spine and does all that, right? Now, here's the problem. The problem is, is that whenever there's, like you said, a traumatic brain injury, there's a, a CTE, there's uh, a concussion, right. right? There's anything like that going on. What happens a lot of times is that there's, there's an injury to that upper cervical area. Okay. And so if you think about that, that upper cervical area from the brain to the spine, it, there's a hole there. It's called your foramen magnum. It's a, it's a big hole that basically, right? Foramen, magnum, big yep. hole, right? Yep. So that big hole that's there, where there's a bone that sits just below that. That's the first, the second bone in your spine that sits there. The first one comes through it and the second one sits there uh, adjacent to that. Now, whenever that happens, what can happen is, is that second bone can shift to mm-hmm. the side. That okay. first bone can too. What can happen within that is because of the trauma that's happened is that it can then decrease the amount of space that's there for that cerebral spinal fluid to come through. Okay. And so as it does that, it, think of it very, very, let's take it to the most basic, like visual way of somebody to think about this mm-hmm. is that if we've got a hose and we've got a hose and we're trying to get water from um, up high down low, mm-hmm. right? And it's got to cycle down. If we kink that hose just a bit and we kink it even more, then less fluid is going to be able to get through there. Right. Now, if we keep pouring at the top, on the top of the hose, let's say there's a funnel and we keep pouring it down the, down the funnel at the top. Yeah. Then if it can't go fi- filter through as fast, it's going to pool at the top. Right. Right. And it's going to sit. Now you tell me a lake that's stagnant or one that has fresh water flowing into it, which one do you want to fish out of? Right. Yeah. The flowing water. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And so what we're seeing a lot of times is a damage that gets done to the brain can be a lot of times because of the fact that there's no circulation there. That right. doesn't fit for everybody, right? Right. Right. But there's plenty of people that have injury to that, and they're seeing it on MRI, mm-hmm. and they're seeing that type of thing going on where they're seeing that upper cervical is not moving the way that it's supposed to, so it's decreasing the flow within that and then causing these types of problems. Uh, okay. So just so I have my mind wrapped yep. around this, so we're talking about the C1 and C2, right? Correct. You okay. got it. And then, so I would imagine that, you know, that that fluid buildup would, would cause pressure. I'd imagine is that, is that are, are headaches or it, anything usually a symptom of so this? It can cause headaches. It can cause it to wear, um, but it can also cause degenerative changes to happen to the brain too. Yeah. I imagine there's that lack of flow would cause, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it would probably exacerbate like the amyloid plaque buildup. I would it, imagine it, all of that. You got it. Okay. And so here's the thing is that whenever we have that, where it's sitting there and, mm-hmm. and it's stagnant, right? What we'll end up seeing is we'll end up seeing degenerative changes within the brain that happen. So it could be, um, problems as far as like, uh, I mean, take your pick. You can plug in any type of yeah. injury to the brain that you can plug into there, mm-hmm. any type of diagnosis. But a lot of times what happens is, is that there's a problem there and we're seeing this more and more. This is the research that you're going to start seeing coming out yeah. in the next several years. So if you remember like, uh, McMahon, right? Jim McMahon, the old quarterback for the mm-hmm. bears. Yeah. He had a problem in his upper, in his upper cervical. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of football players probably have Tons. that issue. Um, yeah. are we seeing it more and more today with just people being, um, just sitting at computers all day we are so we're seeing problems with that and that's more of a, a micro traumas that are happening over time right yeah and so there's micro traumas of sitting in a stagnant position yeah, they're just sitting poor posture just poor posture um they're seeing you know gentlemen that have won the nobel prize have all looked at it and said hey look this postural issue is becoming a bigger and bigger issue because yeah think about we're all looking down at our phones we're all on that we're all connected there yeah and when we're looking down like that all the time not only does it cause stress and strain on the neck and upper back but the mid back and the low back too Right. So that'll exacerbate the problems that we have going right. on there too. Yeah, I mean it's a chain. Um, I feel like I heard that like looking down like that is something like forty pounds of pressure, yeah. or is that what it is? It, yeah, and so it depends on how far down your head goes. So okay. The f- more forward your head goes, the more pressure it's going to be. Think of it like uh, like taking a dumbbell for the listeners out there, right? If we mm-hmm. take a dumbbell, we keep that dumbbell right below the elbow. Much easier to hold it up. I can hold it like that all day. If I start to bring it out you know, 10 degrees forward, that bicep starts to engage. Eventually it's going to get tired 20 degrees forward. It's going to be even more stress and strain, Yeah. you know, 45 degrees forward. Now that really puts a lot of stress and strain on that bicep. Well, it's the same thing for the neck and the head. Hmm. 
Okay. Yeah, man. P- posture is so important. Oh, it's so key. Um, it's, I mean, prioritizing the spine in any sort of like uh, movement protocol, like mm-hmm. it should always be number one. You should yeah. always prioritize like the spine and, and good structure and form. For sure. Um, when, when doing these things. So, wow. All right. Let's, um, I want to, Go back just a little bit there. Sure. Uh, so for the listeners, I'm sure they've gotten the idea by now. You're a chiropractor. I am a chiropractor, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, will you just take me back a little bit? Yeah. Um, like what were your beginnings um, even before chiropractor, uh, yeah. like chiropractor school? Like were you an athlete? Like yeah. what? So take me, take me yeah. back through so your beginnings. What some. started me out was that, uh, yeah, I was an athlete, you know, grew up being an athlete, doing all that. Um, I suffered from a, a concussion. I was playing indoor soccer. I got a concussion. Um, and it was a pretty significant one. So, okay. um, whenever that happened about, uh, uh, shortly after that, I started getting headaches on a regular basis. Yeah. And then I started getting headaches that were lasting five, six days out of the week. Right. And then I would get a migraine that would be debilitating, you know, once to twice a month. I suffered like that for about five years. And I had a friend that kept on telling me, you need to go see my chiropractor. And I was like, why would I go see a chiropractor, man? I don't have neck pain. I don't have back pain. What, what's yeah. the chiropractor going to do? He's like, no, no, for your headaches. It's like, I don't know how a chiropractor is going to help. Now, you have to imagine at that time, I grew up in a complete, you know, medical model kind of family. And uh, and we always, you know, it was like we go see the medical doctor and that's it. And that yeah. was our only thing. And I was pre-med at the time, too. So I was working at a teaching hospital. I was helping out with all the surgeries. I was I was innovating people. Like, okay. I was helping out with everything. You're, like, you're deep in that I was model. deep in it. Yep. So, what, so you were playing soccer. What happened? Like, what did you do? So I, I, it was a, I remember it like it was yesterday, right? Like something like that happened to you. Oh yeah. Remember, right. Absolutely. And so, so I was, uh, I had the shot on goal, uh, left foot. I kicked it. It was full volley kind of a thing. I was like, oh, this is going to be so like, you know how when those things happen, you're like, this is going to be so cool. Oh yeah. Right. Everyone's going to love it. Yeah. Oh, this is going to be great. <laughs> right. And I, I kicked it. And as I did, um, the shot went off and my buddy, he hit me from the side. Right. Oh. And it, it was just, you know, we're just, we're just playing. It's just not in the heat of the yeah. moment type thing. Yeah. Well, it, he, w- he was just defending, right? Oh, he was okay. the defender. He hit me and, um, and it was just a defensive move. It wasn't like, there's was no ill will. It wasn't anything like that it just happens. Yeah. Right. And he hit me. And when I did, I went down, but the way that he hit me and the way that I went down, I landed like right onto my head. So oh. right on the, uh, the, the orbit of your eye, you know? So right yeah. there, your eyebrow where we get a lot of cuts. Yeah. That'll happen. I've, I've been cut there a few different yeah, times. Right. It happens, right. You oh, take, yeah. take a couple of knocks there and it'll happen. Mm-hmm. And so I got Got one really good right there. I landed right on my head there. Now this wasn't like indoor like turf. This was old school gym, so it was nothing. Ooh. Yeah, it was just like you know wood floor on top of concrete. Yeah, right. And we were just messing around, and th- and that's when it happened. Oh you know? man, did you split your head? I did. I split oh. my head, bleeding all over the place. Stitches. Yeah, I had to have a couple stitches. Oh man. So wow. Yeah. So you had a concussion from that. Got a concussion. Yeah. Years of headaches. Years of headaches. And then wh- wh- why did you say, yeah, I'll go, I, I'll finally you try know what? this. I, I finally said, yeah, because, um, really it's because my buddy kept on being persistent. Yeah. You know, he kept on, no nah, man, you really need to like any chance he got he, just in a nice way. He was just, you should go get that checked out. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, my guy can probably help you with that, you know? Um, and so finally I was just like, all right, give me the guy's number. Like, let me check this out. Yeah. And so I went in there and I tell you what, that, that chiropractor explained it to me. He said what was going on. And I was like, all right, that, that makes sense. You know, no one's ever explained it like this. I've talked to tons of surgeons, tons of medical doctors, neurologists, you know, orthopedic mm-hmm. surgeons. I had talked to everybody at that time and, uh, and nobody could give me an explanation to the way that this guy did yeah. the simplicity of it, like the beauty of it that was there. I was like that makes sense right and he just goes well let's just give this a shot and i got that first adjustment and i said this is what i want to do like oh, wow. I, I was i was all in on medical and i was just no i'm going to go be a chiropractor yeah you know and uh and i switched and that was it and i was like this is what i'm going to do with my life this is it wow like i remember like it was yesterday i remember that moment and i thought i'm going to be a chiropractor this is it wow that's cool so, so when you saw those other doctors did, mm-hmm. did some of them like suggest you get surgery or anything or wh- no what did they say nobody like, even suggested surgery it? they were just like yeah you know that happens and it, it stinks and you can try these meds and you can take those meds and yeah. uh, and we can send you for these different protocols and we'll and i did all those things i did what i was supposed to yeah um I, and i followed it to the t right because yeah. i was so all into it i was like i'll, I'll follow what they tell me to do because that's right. what's going to work but nothing would work um you know, and most of the things just made my, my headaches worse and my migraines worse. And I got to the, um, I was at the point, those, those migraines were debilitating. You know, they would knock me out for a full day, maybe even two days. Yeah. And it would just rattle my brain. You yeah. Know? And so. 
I couldn't Man. function like that. Yeah, that had to have been a terrible time. Yeah, um, definitely. That's the issue a lot of times with, with the current healthcare system mm-hmm. and the current model. Um, oftentimes, they'll, if they don't understand it, they'll just tell you, like, it, that's just, it, just live with it. You sure. know what I mean? Like, or they'll just put you on like a pill to, right. to kind of deal with this. Oh, for sure. For like the rest of your life. Right. There's no. You'll uh, take this the rest of your days. And yeah. Be it. yeah. There's no suggestion as far as, you know, lifestyle change or just right. anything like holistic or, right. you know, just natural. Yeah. It blows me away. And I was eating clean. I was exercising all the time. Like it, it, it wasn't those things. Those weren't right. the external factors for me, you mm-hmm. know? Um, I wasn't even drinking coffee. You know what I mean? Like yeah. there wasn't anything. There was none of that stuff. It was, everything was clean. Yeah. Um. And I said I wasn't even drinking coffee because so many people get headaches from either not drinking or drinking too much. But you know yeah. what I mean? They, it's just one of those things where we would continually see that nothing I would do would make the difference. And it was because for me in my situation, there was a structural problem yeah. causing the issue. And nothing's going to fix a structural problem other than correcting the structural issue. Right. Yeah. So it's the alignment of your spine. It's the alignment of the spine. That's wow. Um, did you uh, – do you think – I guess know what you know now. Do you think you know uh, – Sometimes you can put your head in one of like those straps mm-hmm. and kind and of suspend it. it that way. Yep. Do you think that would have helped you in the moment? I, I tried traction too. So oh, I really? tried even cervical traction because because uh, in that journey in that I even went and I was a, a I was a physical therapist assistant. So I was working as a physical therapist okay. underneath the PT mm-hmm. for uh, for a major team and in the private practice through the hospital and and doing all of that and and nothing was fixing that either. So I was I was. Man, I'm all in. I'm I'm ready to try whatever that is. Yeah, you know, and it, none of it was working for me. Oh man! So he um, he aligned he he realigned you, mm-hmm. got you feeling good. Yep. You decided this is the path. This is it. And then here we are today. And here we are today, just like that. Man, that's amazing. Yeah. So um, you've done a lot of a lot of cool stuff in the space. Um, yeah. You're on the 2011 uh, Cardinals. Yeah. So you worked with the 2011 Cardinals yeah. World Championship team. Yep. Um, I'm so interested in like that process. Like, how does that work? So do they like just change doctors all the time? Like, once you're a doctor, you're a doctor for them. Like. I don't know how how does that work. No, that's man? a great question. Yeah, that really is a great question because <laughs> because it could go either way, right? Yeah. So it could go. Um, hey, look, you're on our you're on our team, and that's it. You're with us uh, until otherwise you prove us wrong. Yeah. You're out, right? And but also at the same time, you know, new management comes in, and they'll they, hey, I've got my team, right? You know, like I've got my healthcare providers that are with me, and I've got all my trainers that are with me, and they're coming with me to this new space, exactly, right? And so when we had Tony that came here, that's what he did. He brought his guys with him. He brought in some local guys, and he did his thing. Um, and that happens a lot of times. So like when we had Matheny come, right? Matheny was like, I got my team, I got my guys, and, and those kind of things all happen. Yeah. Um, and it, for those of you that are listening that aren't from, those are all our, our local, like our, our managers that were with the team, right? Yeah. So, um, but, but yeah, whenever new management comes in, they can change things, um, sometimes because of different things as, uh, as different groups start to get involved with teams, sometimes they'll, they'll become like the official whatever for that team. Usually what will end up happening is that in my standpoint, it was, it was that I got the opportunity, I jumped on it and, and ran with it. And it was, it was fantastic. Right? Okay. So, I mean, they're, they are a great organization, great people. Um, I have nothing but amazing and positive things to say about the organization because they've just been so great. Okay. Okay. So now, um, you, you're more focused on like doing your own practice and different things now. Yeah. Right? So even then I had my own practice. Yeah. Uh, I had my own practice. I was doing a lot of that, but I wasn't doing as much traveling and speaking and okay. I, I was doing some, you know, yeah. but now it, it's just escalated. And, and, you know, last year I spoke outside of like China. Um, I spoke, you know, 32, 32 different cities, in, in the year. So oh, wow. you know, I was just busy speaking, going and doing it yeah. and like that. So that's a smooth transition. Yeah. Um, so during that time, what kind of stuff were you working with the athletes on? Like what was it just, was it daily, um, adjustments? Mm-hmm. What, what was the protocol? So, so my thing was, is that I really believe I love working in a team environment mm-hmm. and, and that team environment could be within a clubhouse mm-hmm. of a, you know, of a major league baseball team or within, you know, the, the NFL team or the hockey team or whatever it is that that's there or the NBA team. I love that. But I also love the idea of even outside of that. So in my practice, we co-manage with other healthcare providers, okay. right? So we work with your medical doctor, your orthopedic surgeon, your oral care provider, whatever it is because of our different specialties, your OB, yeah. whoever it is, right? Your pediatrician to make sure we take a team approach to getting that person well. So whenever we're down there with the Cardinals, the idea is, is, Hey, 
you you're the strength and conditioning coach, right? Right. Uh, I'm the chiropractor. This person over here, they're they're the orthopedic surgeon. This person is the PT. This one's the athletic trainer. This one's and yeah. let's make this an inclusive conversation so we can look at that particular player and figure out what do each of us see as being the thing that's wrong with that particular player. Yeah. Because you might see something as like, oh no, there's a problem with his glute. Yeah. Right. Like I see whenever he does a functional squat, there's a problem there. Right. You know, the PT is going to look at it and go, yeah, I see that too. But you notice what's going on with the, the knee. Like right. You've got a problem there too. Right. You know, the massage therapist, everybody's going to see something from a little different. Absolutely. And that's where we can gain value from each other. That's mm-hmm. where we can learn. And once we do that, we're opening up dialogue and making that an inclusive conversation mm-hmm. to where each one of us can discuss, well, I'm great at doing this thing. Let me do that particular thing. And then you do your thing and you do your thing and we can yeah. all work together. Right. And, and I feel like that's uh, that's something that's missing in our healthcare system anyway, just in general, where we're not having this inclusive conversation because there's just too much or there's just not, a, there's too many barriers or whatever it is. Right. Yeah. And I hear it from my patients from their, the medical doctors too, all the time where it's, it's the same situation. The same thing I hear from uh, PTs, the same thing I hear from anybody that we work with. It's like, Oh, this is a different approach to take where we can all work together. And that's the way that's, I would, if I was a, a patient, I would want all my providers, if they needed to talk to each other to discuss what's going on right? so that I gain the most value. Yeah. And that's, what truly caring about somebody is about, right? Yeah, no, I 100% agree. Um, and that's really like the ideal model for, for sure. healthcare, right? Yeah. But it's not the norm. No. For whatever reason. Well, and I can't be the best at all the other stuff. Right. You know, like I used to have, uh, I used to be the one, I, I did acupuncture, right? But I wasn't exceptional at that. Mm-hmm. And so I just said, well, I'm not the best person at this, so I'm going to stop doing acupuncture. But I know other people that are great at it, so I can refer to them whenever patients need that. Right. And vice versa. And we can do those things. We should all focus on the thing we're best at. Right. And then use the other people that are best at that too, rather than, well, I'm the jack of all trades. I can do everything. Yeah. And you just need to see me and that's it. That's great. But those types of people are very few and far between. Right. And uh, and mostly they're they're the ones that a lot of times they're, they're missing the boat on some place. Yeah. But having the team works. Yeah, it's real unfortunate, but it seems to be that um, <clears throat> there are a lot of positions within the healthcare space that are really heavily driven by ego, mm. and everybody just wants to be right. And, um, like, they're not really willing to say, like, man, maybe I'm wrong, or maybe there's a better way, sure. or, or to work together. I, th- I think that, you know, the, the team group approach is definitely where it's at. Yeah. And, um, there, you know, a doctor can only see so many patients. You only have so it's much true. time. So yeah. I think that's where you'll see, now you'll see a shift where we'll have more and more health coaches, yeah. you know, teaching people how to make these lifestyle changes, right. how to, you know, reduce stress and, yeah. and focus on recovery and, and, you know what I mean, environmental different, you and know what I mean, just different things. All these benefits. Yeah. There's all these different benefits that come from that too yeah right? and there's all these different opportunities that'll come from that for the general public to be able to say oh this person is going to be able to help me in this regard yeah and this person is my this person is my, my medical doctor that's going to give me these things this person is my you know my health coach that's going to give me these things this person's my chiropractor that's going to give me these things right. and i'll have my health and wellness team right that help me get where i need to be and done in a way to where it's like, all right, we're, we're getting the lifestyle that we need because there's so much that's missing in that now. We're, we're finding more and more that, that the answer is not in the pill. Right. Right. And people, we've swung so far into that, that dependency on pills that now people are seeing, man, it's not really, it's not fixing my problem. Right. I've been taking this for how many years? You know, like if you've been taking a medication for how many years, and I'm not telling anybody that's listening to stop taking their meds. I'm just saying, if you've been taking something for so long, you've got to consider the fact of, is this actually fixing the problem? Or is this a band-aid that's just covering up the symptom at the time that's not really getting me where I need to be, right? Right. Again, I'm not telling anybody to stop taking their meds. I'm not saying that to anybody. I don't want to be misconstrued. (laughs) I'm just saying... If it's something like, you know, like, oh, I'm taking this blood pressure medication. Well, is there something else you can do where I can, I can get with a health coach? Right. I can get with somebody else that can tell me how to exercise right and how to eat right. So I don't have to be taking those medications anymore. Right. Yeah. I mean, you have to ask yourself, have you, have you implemented these other things? Like, you know, have you looked at diet? Have you looked at lifestyle? Are you moving? Like, are you looking at your rest? Sure. Um, you know, I saw that you, you know, you've given some talks on, you know, like just the issues with opioids and, sure. and, and yeah. all of that. So it's, it's, it's crazy to see so many people relying on these synthetic compounds sure. um, for, for whatever reason, whether it's depression or a statin for blood pressure or yeah. something, but they're not looking at more um, just natural, more natural sure. remedies. Yeah. The, the opioids one is so near and dear to my heart, Yeah, you know, cause, uh, cause we, we've had 
family that have dealt with that. We've had best friends. We've had all those things. And I don't know anybody that's that's out there that hasn't had someone that's been affected by that, whether or not it's a, a loved one, a coworker, whatever it is. Oh, yeah, right? absolutely. And, and, and what people don't realize is, is even like on that, on opioids, nobody says that, hey, look, you've got a 26% chance on your first script of getting your opioids of getting addicted. That's, that's a lot. Right? Like, yeah. that's, <laughs> that's All right. I got a one in four chance. Whoa. And that, that, and, and those are statistics. Those are out there. Like that's information that's out there, but people don't talk about that. Right. And they don't talk about the fact that there's 130 plus people per day that die from opioids. They don't talk about the fact that our vets that are out there that are now on heroin started off on opioids and then got shifted over into heroin because right. they just needed, well, I got cut off. So I'm not, I got to get, I got to get to somewhere. More accessible, I'm addicted it's cheaper. and I'm addicted. Yeah. Right. Like I'm physically addicted and here in our society, um, we we've turned it into because of different things. Uh, we've turned it into, well, those people are addicts. They're bad people. Yeah. Right. And they started off as your mom and as your, your soccer coach and as your whatever. And then all of a sudden they turned into an addict because of the fact that they were prescribed it because of an injury or trauma or because they've had this chronic pain that's yeah. been going on for so long that they then, like, I'll take this script and my doctor gave it to me, so it must be okay. Yeah, and, and that's, yeah, a lot of people are so trusting of their doctors. Yeah. When oftentimes, you know, these guys are so stretched thin and, and yeah. they're they're under the burden of, of hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah. in student loan debt. And it's for like, sure. you know, they have bills to pay too, yeah. you know what I mean? So a lot of times, unfortunately, it's just like, you know, what can I give you to get to the next patient? Yeah. And, um, you know, it, man, it really, I have a real issue with how we treat ad- addiction mm-hmm. as, as a criminal issue oh, for sure. as opposed to like a healthcare issue. I totally it, agree. It blows me away how yeah. we'll send people away to jail and they'll lose their life over like a narcotic or mm-hmm. a plant. Right. But instead of, instead of like offering them like an option to get yeah. better right. or, or just a safer alternative or, you know, if you are going to be doing this, like hey, maybe we could just provide you like the safe means to do it. Yeah. Whatever um, it's going to be. Whatever it's going to be. We've got to figure something else something, out. Something, you know, like this isn't it's a healthcare issue, I yeah. feel like, you know I, what I mean? Totally. Um, it just, it just blows me away how we, we throw people in jail for that. Yeah. And, and you know, we're at that point now to where <clears throat> people are seeing so much like we, we've got an opioid epidemic that's going on. Yeah. And, and they're, that's not shocking to anybody. This isn't going to be the first time you hear that. But but the strategies that they're coming out with now in order to correct that, because, you know, back in the in the 80s and, and 90s and everything, it was crack babies that were being born. Yeah. Now we're having opioid babies that like they're literally addicted and yeah. in the the millions of dollars at birth, right? Yeah. The millions of dollars that it goes into to be able to, to help these, these kids and help that happen. I mean, this isn't just these bad people over here are doing this. It's not that it's, yeah. I was prescribed this rightfully prescribed this, this drug. Mm-hmm. I got addicted. And now all of a sudden, now I've got this major problem that not just affects me, but destroys so many lives right. that, that it just becomes a countless issue. And so we've got to figure out different strategies. And, and you know, the White House has put into a 600-page bill that they just recently did just a couple of months ago to start strategizing that and start implementing those things. Chiropractic is in that. Um, you know, um, I know physical therapy is in that. Chiropractic is in that. Uh, massage therapy is in that. You know, a lot of other, a ton of other strategies are in there too mm-hmm. in order to say these are the things we need to do. They're making it now to where, and I'm hearing this here for us too, that whenever someone goes to the ER after an accident, mm-hmm. I'm having fewer and fewer people that are being prescribed opioids right off the bat. Oh, You excellent. know, or maybe they're going to be prescribed, but they're only going to be prescribed uh, three and that's it. Yeah. You know, and a lot of people are like, they're angry about that. They're like, well, what do you mean? I'm hurting. I'm hurting really bad. They're like, yeah, but the cost does not weigh the you know right. the cost versus benefit like yeah. come on yeah it's a know? slippery slope i mean you Definitely. can b- before you know it you know a month will go by and, yeah. and you're just trying to stay ahead of the pain right like, you don't have no intention of no. becoming you know hooked on these things no, but no one says you know what's a good idea yeah being an addict yeah that sounds like a great life dream yeah I don't, I don't know who wakes up and says that no um are you familiar with kratom at all I am familiar. I mean, just a little bit, as in, like, I know that it's out there, but as far as being knowledgeable about it, to be able to discuss it, no, that's, that's oh, okay. not, no. Yeah, I've, um, I've been, I've, I've been using it for, for, um, I did it for, like, 30 days straight, and I, I do it, like, every now and then, yeah. um, and I've had, I've had really great results with it, as far as, uh, just from, like, an energy standpoint, like, nice. a cognitive enhancer, yeah. but I know a lot of people are having great benefit, um, kicking synthetic opioids with it, and for, like, pain management, right. 
and um, I, you know, it's, it's kind of come under some scrutiny um, as of late from like the DEA. I know there was a moment there they wanted to schedule it as right. like a schedule one. I did hear that, which kind of blows me away because it's just a plant, right? And it's related to the, you know, it's in the coffee family, right. grows in Southeast Asia. Yeah, um, I know it's actually illegal over there, but that's because it cuts into the opioid trade um, in Southeast Asia. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? It's, yeah, you know what I mean. So um, I guess it is technically an opioid because it does actually um, attach to the opioid receptors of the brain. But is it because it blocks? that and doesn't allow the opioid receptor to be accessible if they are taking opioids too or is it that i don't know okay, from I my understanding know. i thought i just it actually attached to that okay. to that particular receptor okay. um so i guess from that standpoint it is technically an opioid but i mean dude some from my understanding people are having just amazing benefits nice. and um, i know it's i mean i just kind of get bumps and bruises just from like training and stuff sure. and like i mean i didn't really notice like anything like um, like crazy off the wall, like, oh, I just feel like really, really good. But yeah. I mean, I had a friend, he said like his back felt better from it. And it's just like, I think these are the type of things that we should probably be exploring. You know, un unfortunately, I feel like a lot of times that those things, um, because of just what you said, like over there, it cuts into the opioid yeah. you know, distribution and, and, and those people are making billions and billions of dollars, yeah. you know, hands over fist because of, because of that. And if that's going to cut into their profits, they're going to get rid of the thing that cuts into their profits. Right. Yeah. Um, until the problem gets to be so big. So whether or not it's something like that or, uh, um, a lot of other things, like I know CBD and things of that nature too. Yeah. I, I know that in a lot of places that what they'll end up seeing is, is, Hey, when we see that this is legal, we see a decrease in opioid use, right? Yeah. If these other things that can help you with pain and help you with these types of problems, these chronic issues that are going on, the usage of this other stuff goes way down yeah. and cost versus benefit when we're looking at that starts to be changed within that too, right? Yeah. And so I, I start to look at it as, look, anything that we can do to help within that is going to be a good thing. And we need to start making changes now because uh, unfortunately it's, it's a bad, bad issue that's not getting any better until we all start to get educated on these things and we start to then implement it as well. Yeah, 100 percent. Man, hopefully we uh, I don't know what the answer is, but I mean, hopefully we're, we know we're going down a better path. I and, hope so, too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, I, I'm curious. Um, are you familiar with like uh, I mean, there's a lot of other modalities out there mm -hmm. like uh, cryotherapy sure. or sauna. Like, yeah. are, have you seen any benefit of some of these other modalities when paired with with uh, chiropractic? <sighs> chiropractic chiropractic yeah, yeah. chiropractic ah, man i'm That's so okay. tongue-tied right now it's okay yeah, yeah. chiropractic there, yeah there we go yeah you know um <laughs> we do have so we have patients that that do that as well you know they'll do things like cryotherapy or they'll, they'll do things like uh, like light therapy they'll do different things too to help with all of those those issues that they're having and and definitely i feel like it's the same kind of thing as saying well i work out and i train but I eat a pint of ice cream every night, so I don't know why I don't have six-pack abs. Yeah. Right? It's like, well, if, if I did, if I ate right and I did this other, and I did the training stuff too, I'm going to see better results. Yeah. Anything we can do to help layer those things on. Yeah. And it works for you, like, keep doing that. You know, it's not, if it's not causing harm, it's not causing damage, it's not doing that. If it works for you, we're all different beings and individuals. Find the things that work for you. The problem is, is that far too often I see that, um, someone's willing to try something for once or twice. It's like a lot of times you need to try something for a period of time. Mm -hmm. Like, well, I stopped eating ice cream for two nights and I still don't see the six pack yeah, abs. I don't understand what's going on. I don't understand on. what's going on. I don't get it. You yeah. know, like I, I, I st I've worked out two days yeah. and there's no six pack. I should right? be Mr. Olympia by now. At least, you yeah. know, like come Lee's on, got dude. nothing on me. I don't know why, you know, like, come on, man. You know, <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger, he's got nothing on me. Right? Yeah, man. So, I'm sure they did it overnight. Yeah. Just like that. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's so. So when you think about those things, you think about the layering effect of all that. Mm -hmm. I look at it as. Anything we can do that's going to be pushing us into a positive direction, keep doing those things. Yeah. And we'll see the positive outcomes that end up coming. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now you're doing, you, you mentioned already, but you're doing, uh, you made a transition to far more speaking. Yeah. Um, so how's that been for you? Like what made you want to make that shift? Um, man, I, I just have always looked at it and said that I want to do that one day. Yeah. You know, um, I remember being really early in my career and, and my wife, she's a chiropractor too. And, um, and I, I love, love, love practice. Like I love taking care of my patients and I still, I'm still here in my practice all the time, mm -hmm. um, but I travel to speak too. Mm -hmm. um, the reason that, that for me, like I remember seeing uh, 
guy that I know that I'm friends with now. I remember seeing him on stage and just being like, that guy right there. I want to, I want to be the one on stage one day. That yeah. sounds amazing because you get to help so many more people. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I remember that happening and I just said, I'm going to do that one day and, uh, and just kept pursuing it, kept pursuing it, pursuing it. And now the transition has been great because I get to go out and I get to help other doctors help their communities. Yeah. And I get to help still in my community too, because I still practice here in St. Louis too, right? Yeah. And so because of that, um, we we just see huge changes, right? So we see changes in our practice. People have us come and speak at their companies, at their organizations, at their churches, and all of that as well. Yeah. As well as we travel all over the country doing that same kind of a thing too. Yeah. That's so awesome, man. It's because it's, it really is just as simple as like having a goal and then yeah. just, just taking steps towards right. that goal. Keep action. You know, I'm sure in the beginning – they're, they're, the the audiences were probably a little bit smaller than they are sure. now. You know what I mean? Yeah, and like in the beginning, um, I don't mean I don't know if you do get paid for speaking yeah. now, but I yeah. mean I'm sure in the beginning, like maybe some of them weren't weren't oh, paid. For you know? sure. So it's like yeah. it's like you have to be willing to sacrifice and go through those early steps yeah. to actually achieve what it is that you want to achieve. And it's the consistency that counts. Yeah. Just like the training, right? Yeah, one hundred percent. It's the consistency that counts. So you have to keep on going after that. And that consistency will eventually get to a tipping point to make an impact and a change, right? Yeah. And so, yeah, when I first started off, I wasn't getting paid to do anything. It was, <laughs> I was paying to go there. I was paying, you know, like yeah. all that kind of stuff. But from showing up over and over and over and over and knowing like that's my vision and that's my focus. Yeah. Like I wasn't going to let up on that. And fortunately, like I'm truly blessed in the fact that I have a supportive wife mm -hmm. and a supportive family that are like, yeah, go after that. Yeah. You know, like they're behind me too. Uh, that doesn't mean that every single day they're always like, yay, you're traveling again. Yeah. Right? That just means, no, I get it because I see the bigger vision and purpose of what you're doing. Right. 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 And, and that takes dedication. Like you doing this, like this podcast, that takes a lot of dedication and it takes a lot of work to say, no, I'm going to go after this. I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to bring value to my, my audience, to my listeners so that they can gain value in their life. Oh yeah. And you're constantly looking for that. Like you're constantly searching for those things and that takes dedication and devotion and passion for what it is that you do. So, so thank you for doing what you oh, do. Well, man. Thanks man. Yeah, no, for sure. Absolutely. 100%. I mean, I decided when I did this that I'm going to do all these in person. So, yeah. I mean, it makes it more difficult, but it sure. also makes it that much better. Yeah. Because, um, like, the goal is I want to have, like, authentic conversations with people. Yeah. And I feel like that's really hard to do if you're just doing it over Skype, if you're I doing it over the phone. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's – dude, it's, it's totally worth it. So, I was just in L.A. last week. Uh -huh. And um, to – to, to make ends meet because I'm still at the beginning of this whole sure. journey. Dude, I rented a van and I like did urban camping. I was sleeping out nice. of the van the whole week, dude. Yeah. And like I had people who I knew there so that I could use their bathrooms and whatnot. Yeah. So I was able to get what, done what I needed yeah. to get done, man. Right. So I just feel like if, if you really do um, know why you're like, if you have your why, like you'll be able to figure out how. Man, I have to tell you too, I so appreciate the fact that you share that too, right? Like you share oh. like, no, I went there. Yeah. Like, I went and I did it because I think that it's funny because I was just talking about this with my wife and I was just talking about this with my team right before you got here. And we were talking about the fact that it's those times that you look back on and you're like, remember that? Yeah. Like, remember? And, and you, when we've all had those moments where you look back on that stuff and you always smile, you're like, yeah. man, that was tough. And I can't yeah. believe that. And I, I don't, <laughs> can you imagine we did that? Yeah, you know, it's and, nothing glamorous. No, but nobody's willing to wade through that. Yeah. Right. In order to, to do that, even though it's, look, it, this isn't going to be glamorous. This isn't going to be fun. This right. isn't going to be, you know, what it's all cracked up to be. It's not going to be those things. Um, but eventually I'm going to keep going and it's going to pay off. And, you know, I can remember times in my journey where I really questioned whether or not I'm like, man, this has got to pay off at some point. It's yeah. got to happen. Right. Right. And staying true to that and committed to it. Like, it does. You right. just got to keep going after it. Yeah, man. You just have to keep showing up and you have to like be open and you have to yeah. be willing to participate. That's it. Yeah. It's it's really that simple. It's, it's, it's easier said than done, I Much guess. Much easier said than done. <laughs> if it was easy, then everybody would do it. That is 100% right? true. Yeah. Um, but that was something that I really noticed about um, like you on social is that um, you, you do talk a lot about um, you know health and wellness, but sure. you do talk about like business and mindset. Yeah. And um, that was, that really stuck out to me. You actually you made um, a post. I think it was on your story yesterday. Yesterday, you said you know you had you know a, a, a suggestion that oh, you had for people is sure. to take a, 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 a morning yeah, yeah a morning meeting so yeah. you want to talk about that yeah sure no thanks for watching that I appreciate <laughs> that man you know you put this stuff out there and you're like I don't know if anybody Who's, saw that yeah nobody's yeah. paying attention right I don't know maybe they turned the sound on I hopefully they heard this you know it's not just me talking but um but yeah uh, um 
I did talk about that. I talked about the fact that a lot of times people will tell me, they'll say, just that getting started, like that, that motivation, like the, yeah. I feel like actions are awarded. Mm -hmm. And if you keep taking action in the right direction, it's going to end up paying off. And so when I say that, some people are like, well, what does that mean? And I find like an easy thing to do is, is get up, do your morning routine, whatever that is, you know, however you get connected, however you get pumped up, however you get your morning rocking and rolling, do that. The things that make you uh, take action and move well and do all this kind of thing, eating well, whatever it is, right? Yeah. Like, what is it for you? I've got my routine. I know you have yours. Yeah. I'm sure your listeners have theirs too. Um, and then the other thing that I find is, is that then taking that energy and moving into a meeting before I get my day started. Yeah. So I like to have a meeting with somebody, not every single day, but if I do that once or twice out of the week, like that's going to not only allow me to connect with somebody and allow us to then build each other's uh, whatever that is, right? Like I can work with you, we can do this and we can help each other with these different things. Yeah. That promotes more energy. And for me, that's one of those things where I get energy from that. And then I'm like, man, I'm ready to go crush it today. Oh yeah. Right. And then we had uh, on that same story, I talked about now we're going to have a doc that's going to come in that's going to watch us today. Right. And she was coming in. She's a practicing doc. She came in just to, I just want to see the way that you do your practice. Like, how do you run your practice? I want to, can I learn something from you? And it's like, yeah, whatever we can do to help. Like, exactly. we want to help you, you know? There's, right. How can we help? And that feeds off of energy too. So whatever right. those things are that, that feed into that energy, like you want to do more of that because those are the things where when that happens, you're like, man, I'm pumped. I'm ready to go do something. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. No, that really resonated with me because I mean, oftentimes you do meet with somebody mm -hmm. if, if there is like a real connection there yeah. and they're on that same, just like that, that same like wavelength as yes. you, like you'll come away so energized mm -hmm. and it just takes you into the, like to the next thing, to the right. next thing. And then, like you said, maybe we can do business together or maybe like you're just, you, you grow your network. You know what I mean? Right. Like you don't know what could come about from that. And, um, that's a part of the reason why I love doing these podcasts because it's like I just get the energy. It's like, yeah. all right, and then there's the next one. There's right. the next one. Like I'm just constantly like chasing yeah. that next high. <laughs> yeah, which is, that's a great thing to chase, right? Yeah, man. Just, like, just, I'm just building. Right. That's it. And I think that so many people are lacking that, right? So they're like, oh, that sounds great for you. Yeah. That sounds awesome. But they they just don't see the thing that they're in touch with that's going to be the thing that's going to help them with that too. Yeah. Or maybe they know what it is, but maybe they're afraid to move forward with it. Yeah. Or maybe they're like, yeah, I know that if I met with people too, I'd be amped up and I'd be energized too. But who do I meet with? Yeah. You know, it's like, well, you can find those things. There's always, there's going to be obstacles, but those obstacles right. always become opportunities. So just take them and move forward with that. Yeah. And man, that, that feeling of doubt and it's kind of scary. Like mm -hmm. it feels so good once you overcome that. Oh, for sure. Yeah. It's just like the most liberating feeling. Yeah. And then you just get used to that yeah. and then it just becomes easy. It so. just becomes part of what you do. Um, so what is your morning routine like? So my morning routine is, is I get up, um, you know, I, I take the dogs out. I do that whole thing. And, and then I always like to make sure that I get up. I work out. Um, after my workout, I like to make sure I'm focusing on my vision board. I do some prayer and meditation. Um, I eat a little something. And I always take my kids to school. Okay. So I take my kids to school. You know, my while I'm doing that, you know, my wife is then, you know, getting up and getting going. And she's doing things as well. Uh, the kids are getting themselves up and getting ready and doing all that kind of stuff. Right. But I like to take them to school. And when I, I take them to school... I would say 85 to 90% of the time we are listening to an, an audio book, yeah. right? Like we listen to a book on the drive to school, right? Yeah. And I pause it and we talk about business things and we talk about entrepreneurial things and we mm -hmm. talk about health and we talk about wellness and we talk about whatever it is, whatever the book is. So we can pause it and have discussions within that too. Yeah. And, uh, and then I drop them off. I, you know, give them a kiss. I go do my meetings yeah. or, you know, I come into the office and I get rolling. Right. Oh, man. Yeah, you're rock and rolling in the morning, yeah. dude. Uh, um, what do you typically eat in the morning? I typically eat, so my wife makes these great smoothies, yeah. right? And so they've got a ton of vegetables, a ton of green in there, a uh -huh. lot of great stuff. So that's usually what we eat. Um, you know, there'll be some eggs, some protein that she'll make or something along those lines. Um, that's usually the vast majority of it. Yeah. Sometimes I'll say, um, I'm not. I'm not doing breakfast today. I'm doing more some fasting that we'll end up doing or something along those lines. Yeah. Never for the kids, but for us. Like right. That's what, you know, I'll say, oh, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. So, or I some tend, fruit. Yeah. I tend to do that most days. I, I don't normally eat until like noon. Yeah. I found I'm not that hungry in the mornings yeah. these days. So, um, yeah, I really enjoy fasting. Yeah. So what, uh, what, so what, what books do you like to read? Like, what do you like to turn to for, for motivation or what are you currently reading? Oh, well, um, I'm currently reading... Let's see. I'm reading three books. I'm, I'm a, I'm a, uh, <laughs> I'm all over. So it just depends on like, what yeah. am I, what's, what's my energy right now? Mm -hmm. Right. So what am I feeling? So I'm reading man up. 
okay. which is a, a great book. Mm -hmm. um, I'm rereading uh, 10X, right? Grant Cardone. Grant Cardone's 10X. I love I his just amps me up. Yeah. Right? So I love that one. That's a great one too. And uh, and what else are we listening to? Um, I've got the kids listening to. Oh, we're listening to uh, Influence. Oh, great so, book. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I haven't so I read Man Up a number of years ago and yep. then um I haven't uh read Ten X by Grant Cardone yet, but I've read his Seller Be Sold. Oh yeah. Love that book. That's a great one. Man, it, it really shifted my paradigm on yeah. how I think about selling. Yeah. Um, because I think so many people get hung up on that sure. and it's just, it was so great. It was much more than a book I yes. mean, because he goes on these rants and, oh, and yeah. he goes on, man. Um, and then what was the other one you said? Uh, influence. Oh, influence. Chaldini's. Yeah. Yeah. Seven it's habits yeah. of persuasion. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a really good book. Love that one. Yeah, man. That's a classic psychology book. Yeah. So, so we'll, we'll cycle in, we'll get in new ones. We'll do all that, you know, and yeah. it just depends. So we've listened to the kids and I, and my wife, we all like to watch a uh, shark tank. Oh, right. I love that show. And so, they, so we'll pause it and then we'll talk about, you know, different things. So we'll talk about the story that's going on. Yeah. So we've read all of their books. Mm -hmm. Right. And we've, I say read as in like, we're listening to them. Right. Yeah. So I we mean, listen to it makes them it so Audible. much easier. Yeah. yeah. So we, we listen to them and, uh, and we do that and it, it works out really well. And it's just a way for us to. To get the message in yeah. for them, to pour into them in a way that uh, that they don't normally, yeah, they aren't normally going to be exposed to. Are you familiar with Jocko Willink? I am. Have you uh, have I'm, you read his books? Yes. Okay. What about his children's books? I haven't read his children's books. Dude, those are great. Are they? I would recommend them for your kids really? if you haven't gotten them yet. I, I I'll get them. Dude, they're I'll phenomenal. Order that. I got yeah, I got them for my son. Um, and yeah, they're great. We've gotten all the... Uh, the Andy Frazilla books? Of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know. He just released a few other ones, I think. Yeah. I haven't gotten the newer ones. I yeah. got his first three, though. Yeah, I have his first three. Yeah, I got... Two, or maybe maybe release one new one. Okay. I don't know. Either yeah. way. Right. But yeah, I got those two. My three-year-old loves his book. Like, the other kids love it, too, but my three-year-old's like, I want to read the one about the dogs in the fruit stand. Yes. I'm like, okay. Absolutely. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, she yeah. She can tell you, to you by heart. You I know. think I got him a little bit on the tail end um, of my daughter. She's, uh, she's probably just a little little bit too old. I was like, I'm going to get it anyway, yeah. even though she's probably a little bit too old for it. But I was, I'll keep this for whoever needs them next, mm -hmm. though. Um, and then Jocko just got, he just released a newer book, um, which is probably for about that same age range yeah. as like the one that Andy released. Yeah. And that was a really good one, too. Okay. I have to order those. I, I think those books are just phenomenal. It's great. Great way to, like, all of that stuff, it's a great way to pour into kids and have them, like, see the message and meet them where they are. Yeah. So you're influencing that um, in a positive way, that, right? It's having a positive impact on their lives. Yeah. It's like anything we can do to make that happen, that's what we do. Yeah. Do you um, do you read too much uh, in other areas of in health and fitness? I mean, I imagine you do. Yeah. But um, what, what are some, some books that you've read there, some different things that you, you like know, to dive into? We, really, a lot of my stuff is, is diving into the research that goes along with this, too. So okay. sometimes people are like, that's boring reading. I'm like, I know, but I need to know. I love that stuff. I like that stuff. You know, like, yeah. I want to know that. Like, the, the opioid stuff, like, I want to know about that so yeah. that I can help more of my patients and help people understand, right, um, the structural components of those things. Like, I want to know, like, more about the stuff about the structure of the spine so that we can look yeah. at that, right? I want to know about some of the neurology things more of the neurology so that we can figure out, like, how how does that affect these type of things yeah. that we can help more people with, right? Yeah. And and how can I help my athletes? And then how does that relate to now, you know? So mm -hmm. all of those things, I look at it as we can put all those things together to make it to where it's a worthwhile effort yeah. and make it to where it's something that we can make it easily digestible and something that can make an impact on somebody's life. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I'm about to read the uh, the gut-brain connection. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Uh, yeah, man. Yeah. There's just, there. I mean, again, kind of going back to the brain, there's just so many things that I wasn't aware that helped the brain, like yeah. creatine. Is, yep. I mean, that's been, there was a study, I think it was in like 93, mm -hmm. talking about the, the neuroprotective properties of creatine. It's like, why am I just now learning right. about this? Why am I just now hearing? And that's the way a lot of that stuff is, right? Yeah. Like a lot of that stuff, we, we don't hear about it. We miss the boat until it's, you know, 20, 30 years later, it's like, holy cow, how am I just now yeah. hearing about this stuff? Yeah, there's so many things. Lion's mane mushrooms, you know, CBD we right. talked about. I right. mean, sleep is so underrated. Sleep, I mean, it, got to get sleep. It's the number one thing. It, it is no doubt. Like, you've got to have sleep. If you don't have sleep, you're missing out. Yeah. And, and to, in today's, I'm glad to see things kind of shifting a bit because, yeah. you know, today's society, it's all about the hustle, right? It's yeah. all about hustle, work hard, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. And people think of it like, oh, well, if I got up at four in the morning, then I'm getting more in than everybody else. Like, yeah, but what do you, what's the cost versus the benefit there too? Yeah. Yeah. You're getting more in. Why don't you get, make your day more productive instead? You know, right. it's, it's. It, 
we need to make sure you have sleep. That's when your body gets what it needs. Yeah, I mean, that's when your body actually recovers mm-hmm. and, and, you know, and fixes all the things no that doubt. need to be fixed. That you've know? done throughout the day. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And um, are you too are you too familiar with, like, what's going on with, like, stem cells and different things right now? You know, I am. Um, it's one of those things where I feel like there's, there's so much out there, and I don't, because it's not a service that I provide to mm-hmm. people, but it is something that I refer out for other people to go get done. Mm-hmm. Um, I know enough about it. But I don't know, like, in-depth information about yeah. it, you know? Yeah, it's just such a fascinating field, sure. right? I mean, For especially sure. when you when you do, you know, pair it with your field. Yep. Because, I mean, oh, yeah. I think they're, they're now have been able to regenerate, um, uh, you know, the disc, your, vertebra, your yeah. vertebral disc. It's so. amazing to see what they're doing with it. Yeah, man. You know? just, I mean, really and, we're, and we're just on the on the verge of, of yeah. seeing so much more that's going to start to come out with that. Yeah. That uh, that it is, it's outstanding. And, and it's going to be one of those things where we'll say, man, I remember when we didn't have stem cell. Yeah. You know, like that was crazy. And then <laughs> now it's going to, and then it's going to be everywhere. Yeah. Right? And it's going to be one of those things that can really impact so many people's lives. And, and they're still tweaking those things and modifying and trying to figure out, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the best avenue for everyone to get within that as well right so that they get the most out of it right yeah. so it's the most beneficial for that person and and i'm excited to see where it's going to go yeah man it's fascinating stuff i was really looking into it. i had shoulder surgery um, sure. at the beginning in 2016 they told me it was torn too bad to actually use the stem cells i went out to a blue eagle i think blue tail is mm-hmm. what it is out in chesterfield mm-hmm. um and they their process is where they you know they take uh, your marrow out of your hip and yep. then they put that in the center infusion and get yep. your stem cells that way and i don't know if they were going to actually pair that with the prp i would hope so yeah um but man i didn't really like that idea i'm like can we get some like placental stem cells right. or can something we not <laughs> jab that thing into my hip yeah but on yeah. that same note i mean i wonder if those stem cells would be better since they're mine I don't know. And, and you know what? I don't know the research on that to say, to be yeah. able to speak enough about it to say, yeah, I, yeah, I'm real big in, let me stay in my lane Yeah. on the thing. Like I'm good at this That's part. That's a good thing. Yeah. You know, like I don't want to, <laughs> Yeah. I want people to get value from it. Yeah. If I stay in my lane, then I know I can help it. If I'm outside of it, I'm like, well, I can talk a little bit about that. But other than that, I'm, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm free to speculate. I'm there not, you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not giving anybody like health advice as far as that's concerned. Um, yeah, man. Um, do you, do you follow anybody, um, like, like Ben Greenfield or Mm -hmm. anybody like that? I feel like some of the things that, um, he's doing is just so fascinating. Yes, for sure. It's like, he's doing all, uh, just self-experimentation. Yeah. He's, he's out there doing it on his own and trying to figure out like, let me figure out how this is working for me. Right. Yeah. And and that stuff I think is amazing. Whenever you see somebody that's being a pioneer within that and, and testing that for everybody else and reporting things back, it's like, all right, now, now he'll get a whole sampling of people because they'll follow what he's doing and say, let me try that for me too. And it'll be a whole sampling of people where it's like, man, we can get a full data set here with these. Of course, there's gonna be a ton of variables and all that kind of thing. But at the same time, it, it, it's more than anecdotal whenever you start to look at it where you get a large group of people that can start to do that, right? Yeah, absolutely. I wonder when we're actually going to start, like, validating anecdotal evidence mm-hmm. because it, it's so easy to just discredit that oh, if it's not sure. something, you know, double-blind yeah. control. Of course. See, you know, yeah. it's like, I mean, the, the, like, here it is. Yeah. Common sense right. kind of tells us yeah. otherwise, which yeah. is a lot of, like, what you do almost. Yeah. You know, it's like this just makes sense. Yep. And the, you know, the great thing is now is that for what I do is that there's so much research out there with it. It's just that at the same time, there's a, not a lot of, it's like the stuff that you've talked about before. That was something that was done back in 93. Yeah. But now I'm just hearing about it. Right. right? There's so much research that's out there on chiropractic and how it is that it helps and how it is like how impactful it is on, you know, brain health, on the nervous system, on, you know, helping out with disc issues on all these different things, ridiculous complaint, whatever it is, you know, asthma, things with colic with babies, all of that kind of thing. And then you start to see it like, holy cow, I didn't know that that could help. And we hear that every day here in the office where yeah. people are like, I didn't know that it could do that. Or I didn't know that it could help with that. I didn't know that that could happen. Yeah. But sure enough, for me, it helped. Holy cow. You yeah. Know? Is so. it one of those deals where, like, we, we, we knew it helped for all this time, and then now we're just starting to get the research to support it? Definitely. Yeah. So when, when all this started, you know, whenever the Palmers started with chiropractic, it was one of those things where they started it off and they said, this is what we speculate is, is going on. Mm-hmm. And there was a lot of stuff that they were like, man, they're dead on on that. That was spot on. Like, I don't know how they figured that out. Like, that was yeah. way ahead of time in figuring that stuff out. And whenever you see that stuff happen, you see that stuff come together and you see the science that can back that up. It's like, man, that's pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, that was a, a different time. Yeah. You know, it's amazing to see. Yeah. We, yeah, we made a lot of advancements. For sure. Um, now, uh, do you journal or anything? I don't I don't journal. Um, I definitely every day write down my goals and things yeah. like that. 
you know, you like so a daily I, task list. I do my, yeah. So I, I do my daily task and I've got my like top, top three things. I've got to get these three things done. Okay. Right. So those are my, my must do's and I, I do it a win column and a loss column. Okay. Right. So sound familiar? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Frizzella. Yeah. That's it. I so it. me too. So I, I've got my things. I'm like, I got my wins. I got my losses and a loss carries over to the next day. I got to get that done. Yeah. Right. And so those are things that can impact my life. How do you like to go about, um, prepping for your speeches? Um, I like, for me, I, I know that if I'm prepping for it, number one is that, uh, I know other people that will take somebody else's content and information and they, and they try to try to do it and say, and make, turn it into their own. I like to, like, I want to dive into something and find out all my own. Cause then I can talk freely about it. Yeah. Right. And then I can stay in my lane about it. Right. So, so I dive in, I create all my stuff. I create everything. Um, and I, I do it all myself and then I want to prep and prep and prep. So I rehearse, 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 rehearse. Okay. So I find that's, that's for me, that's gotta be the thing to have done. Right. So I know on this slide, I'm going to talk about this here. I want to talk about this story here. I'm going to do this. And, and it's not like it's memorized. It's just cause it's gotta be organic too. Yeah. But at the same time, like I need to have a construct to work within. And so for me, that's, that's going to be the biggest thing. And then I like get a, I like to get a feel for understanding of who's in the audience, who, what, what the room is like, what are they looking for? Yeah. How can I fill that void? Right. So if the rest of the conference is kind of down, then I want to kind of take it up. If everyone else is up, like, am I going to be up too, or is it going to be like, I'm going to bring it down a little bit and then come up or yeah. what's it going to be? Yeah. So, um, for me, it's multifactorial. So the best way for me to prep is just make sure that I'm, I'm ready, that I'm game ready and that I, I'm as on target with all that stuff as I possibly can be. Cause whenever it's just like this, like whenever it's live, like it's live, yeah. you know, it, here we go. Yeah. You man, know, it's time to show up. that's it. It's time to show up and whatever you say, that's what's out there now. Yeah. Right. And so you've got to make sure that, that your content is solid and that everything that you've got is ready to rock and roll. Right. So, so I, I pour a ton of time into that to make sure it's all right. Yeah. It's all the things that, uh, that people don't see. Oh, for sure. Right. And then whenever you speak well, they're like, man, you're so talented. Right. I'm like, no, (laughs) I just spent hours and hours and hours and hours and hours doing it. Must be nice. Yeah. No. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Must be nice. You're just good in front of everybody. I'm like, no, that's not it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So it takes a lot of fumbles. For sure, man. Yeah, for sure. I have totally messed up. You know, like I have, I can't even tell, I can remember one time, like I could share tons of stories with you. I mean, about times where I've messed up. Yeah. I literally was, was one time I was supposed to speak for an hour and I got done in 45 minutes and I literally called, like this was at my second time speaking and I was like, okay, so we're just going to take a break, you know, (laughs) you know, just a 15 minute break and the organ. Or event organizer and I'll just tell you right like that's the worst thing that you could do is go you under know? your time well yeah if you go under your time it's like now you, now we've got all this dead air yeah right and then I called a break and so the organizer's like oh my gosh now this was years this was you know 10 years ago that's hilarious right that this happened to me but I was just starting out and I didn't know how bad <laughs> that was and the organizer was like uh and so obviously you make that mistake once and I say that to let people know like if, if it's something that you want to go for like you're gonna mess up just yeah. realize that and just move forward and go okay i learned and guess what i've never gone under my time ever again in fact i'm always right on time yeah like it's like okay you give me 60 60 minutes it's going to be 60 minutes of content right yeah that was probably a priceless lesson definitely yeah you can't pay for that no absolutely right? like that's that's something i had to learn yeah you can only learn it through experience that's it yeah man i mean that's that's yeah that's huge um well dude is there is there anything that you would recommend for the, I mean, because I feel like you're just a very positive person, very oh, productive thanks, and you, um, some of the content that you're giving out, um, is, is definitely like how to get shit done essentially. Yeah, um, is there anything, any like, you know, advice that you give to like, you know, the young entrepreneur or somebody who's just looking to get into their speaking career or just kick off what they got going on? Yeah. I mean, I, I would say that actions are awarded and and I've said that, but that would be the advice that I would give. It's like actions are awarded. Be willing to, to pay the price on those things. Nowadays we have so many platforms that if you want to speak, you, you can put your content out there in so many different places and people are going to find it, right? They're going to gravitate towards it. They're going to see it and they're going to be, I'm attracted to this. And you're going to find your niche of people that, that it comes down to, right? Yeah. So you're going to find your niche of people that like, Ooh, I like what he's saying there. Or she said that that way. And that totally speaks to me. Right. And the problem is, is that a lot of times, just like anything, like you mentioned, we've talked before about training, right? And so people just don't get the reps in and they think, I need to get my reps in. And I, I love this. Um, you know, you don't practice on your paycheck, right? So meaning that you don't get to game day 
and go, okay, now I'm going to start practicing how to bat. Right. Now I'm going to practice how to take a ground ball. Right. Now I'm going to practice how to be a wide receiver and catch a ball or yeah. take a snap or whatever it is. You've done all that stuff beforehand to get to that point. Right. But most people aren't willing to take those reps beforehand in order to get to where they want to be. Yeah. And so they're like, well, once I get the opportunity to speak, then I will practice this. Right. No. They yeah, that's be so true, beforehand. Man. That's so right? true. People are like, all right, yeah, once that happens, like, then I'll then, show up. Right. Yeah, I'll do, I'll do it on game day. Yeah, and I'll do like, it on game day. Like, that's not how it works, no, man. Like, you nobody. have to be doing this now. Or exactly. people will do that, um, like, at their job. They'll be like, I'll start working harder when they promote me. It's oh, like, yeah. It's like, no, bro, you're not going to get promoted until exactly. you start working it's harder. It's the exact same thing. Like, what are you talking about? Exact same thing. You, got, you have to show up first. Yeah. Show up as if. Show up as if you're already that person. Show up at that level to where it's just, and it's just a small switch, right? Yeah. If I show up as if that's the way that it is, eventually it's going to be the way that it is, but I have to do the things to back it up. I can't just, it can't just be a headspace thing. Yeah. Right. It needs to be there too, but I need to make sure I'm doing everything I can. So whether or not you're shooting tons of video and putting it out there, or you're making tons of posts and putting it out there, or you're, you know, you're speaking to your mom, you know what I mean? Like, Hey mom, can I practice this talk on you? Right. Or whatever it is. Right. Hey, you're my friend. Can I just do this? And you let me know, give me feedback. Right. Yeah. But you've got to make sure that you're showing up every time for that and be willing to, I'll, I'll be there to fill in the little gaps that you've got. You've got a, a two hour time slot. You've got a 30 minute that you need me to fill in. You've got a 15 minute. You need me. I'll show up and I'll talk about this and I'll make that happen. Yeah. But show up to those things. Yeah. 100% showing up is, is half the battle. For sure. And most people, they aren't willing to give before they get. Yeah. Right. So I'm going to show up. I'm going to speak at your event, but I want to get paid. Well, it's your first time speaking, or it's your your tenth time speaking. And right. You, you, you think you're going to get paid already? Well, well, yeah. I'm supposed to get paid, right? Like, no, no, no. No. Why don't you show up? Show me what you can do, and then you'll earn the opportunity for that other stuff. Yeah, man. Just give, give, give. Provide value. <laughs> That's it. Um, I'm a huge believer in the law of attraction, and yeah. just you know the energy you put out is the energy that you receive. For sure. So I mean, you just have to be willing to just give unconditionally. Absolutely. Give yeah. without the the. Uh, unconditionally right so i'm given without the expectation that i'm gonna get anything back yeah absolutely and, and that's hard to be especially nowadays to be detached from that yeah like i'm just gonna give for the sake of giving yeah yeah hey man that's that's a i, I really love that concept um so uh, we are uh, right at an hour man so i really Perfect. i really appreciate um you taking the time um <laughs> I just want to uh, just turn the floor over to you. Uh, anything you want to talk about, plug your socials, the floor is yours. Take your time. Yeah, my throat just got really dry right there. Yeah, no, I, I was having that issue earlier. I, I totally understand. Um, I don't know what it is. Maybe <laughs> I was here. I was coughing. It was a struggle for me earlier, too. So, yeah, I mean... Um, my social is uh, is Dr. Alex Vidan on Insta. Um, <clears throat> on Facebook, it's Alex Vidan DC. Um, I mean, the only thing that I that I would say is is that is a lot of what we've talked about. It, it's it's taking those action steps to make sure that those things are are awarded for you. And one thing that I hear a lot of times is that it's just a small shift, right? Like these things are all small shifts, and those little shifts make big impacts. It's the, it's those small things that make the biggest impacts. Um, <clears throat> whenever I, whenever I think about that, I think about like showing up and a lot of what we talked about is it, you said it a lot. You're like, yeah, you got to show up. You yeah. got to show up. So if I could, if I could, I'll share one quick story, right? Please do. One yeah. quick story. So I, I'm down, I'm at the Cardinals and it was my, it was literally like my first month being down there with the Cardinals and I was pumped, right? Like I, I was like, man, this has been a dream of mine. Yeah. Right. And, and here in St. Louis, it's the, the Cardinals. Clubhouse. Yeah. I'm yeah. in the clubhouse, right? I'm, I'm here and, uh, and I showed up early. Like I like to show up early and I show up early and I'm walking into the clubhouse. And as I walk into the clubhouse, there's Chris Carpenter. He's, he's laying on the floor stretching. Okay. Right. And like, the dude's, amazing he's a great guy yeah. right and, and a legend here in st louis mm -hmm. right and he's sitting there on the floor and as soon as i walk in um everybody down there pretty much goes by first names or it's very friendly right it's not dr vidan it's alex right yeah or, or doc right all very laid back and so i see carp and i was like hey carp what's up and he looks at me and he's like he was almost like in a trance right like he's just focused over there and he's doing his thing and he's just kind of doing whatever and he looks over at me and have you ever had somebody that looked at you but they weren't looking at you they were looking through you oh yeah like that's what he was doing he was yeah. looking through me and I, and I was just kind of like what and I look behind me to see if there's something behind me that he's looking at because he's yeah. not looking at me I, I can tell he's not looking at me yeah and then he was just like oh 
hey, Doc, what's up? And then he goes right, right, right back to stretching, right, and doing his thing. I'm like, man, that's weird. Carp has always been totally cool. I wonder what's going on. All right, you know, I'm the only one here, so I can't ask anybody else yeah. at this point because it's early. And then they posted the roster, right? And they posted the roster, and they put the roster up there, and, uh, and I see Carp's pitching. And so Carp's pitching, and I, and I look, and I was like, okay. So he, I come to find out, like, that's his pregame thing. Right. He's getting ready for the game. Hmm. And I thought to myself, man, how cool is that? Um, and I thought I thought about, you know, here's this guy that he he gets paid a lot of money. Yeah. To play a game. Right. He's just playing a game. Right. And that's it. And it made me reflect on myself and go, um, if he's willing to put in that kind of focus and that kind of energy and that kind of determination and that kind of persistence to play a game, how is it that I'm showing up to my practice every day? Like, am I showing up game ready every single day whenever I come in? Am I showing up at the level that people deserve whenever I show up? And I, I put that back on you as the listeners, right? Like, I, I put it back on you. as Are you showing up to the level that you truly are there, right? Yeah. Like, are you showing up at the level that, like, man, this is something that's going to make an impact on people's lives, right? Um, or, or make an impact on my family. This is going to, you know, whatever that is for you, whatever that driving force is, I look at that and going, that to me is, is the keystone of someone that's going to take their se- their self, their family, their life, whatever it is, at, to the highest level possible because they're willing to do those things and they're willing to put in the time, effort, and energy and put in that focus. So I would say whatever it is for you, like show up at that level to where you can say, no, I'm proud of, I'm proud of that performance. I'm proud of the, what I've done for that. I'm proud of how I've shown up every single time. Yeah, yeah, man, that's powerful, man. Thank you, man. Just show up like it's game day. That's it. Game Absolutely. day. Man, well, we'll end on that one. Cool. Absolutely. All right, everybody, until next time.